Yeah, in ZBrush, you can texture paint. So right now I've got this kind of uh, Dynamesh uh, sort of dragon head, I guess. Um, what's great about ZBrush is that you can essentially start painting directly on the model without UVs. Um, if you have uh, just a regular sphere uh, or uh, low res mesh, so right now this thing is fairly low poly count, it's 500 polys. Usually when I paint, I will switch to a standard brush. And right now, usually when you have a standard brush or any brush that has Z add or Z subtract. So that basically means that area, uh, uh, sorry, um, the area affected by the brush is gonna be pushing or pulling the surface around. You can turn one or both of those options off. Usually it's one or the other. So if you cl click off the orange button, there'll be no impact in sculpting. Again, I usually do this with a standard brush. You can paint in material only, RGB, which is color information or texture information or both. I usually almost always only do RGB. And if you notice in ZBrush, you know, when you switch the color palette around, it, it sort of auto fills the object. And that's because right now it's just kind of a quick preview option. So when you want to paint, you know, let's say you want this thing to be a, an orange color and start with that, that base, pick that, that tone and uh, pick that hue and then you go to color, fill object. So now when you switch this color palette around, it will not auto switch, right? So we've kind of overridden the preview me uh, mode. And I've noticed that this does happen when you're new to ZBrush. If you want to get back to that point where you just want simple color and want to be able to quickly adjust the preview back, you have to switch to a flat color material, 100% white, go to color, fill object, and now you can freely switch back and switch colors for the, uh, well, it should be switching colors. For some reason it's not, but let me, let me try that again. I think I might have to be an MRGB, so flat white, flat color, 100% white, and I think if I go fill object, yeah, this MRGB, should now allow me to get back here. Again, ZBrush does, <laughs> sometimes ZBrush doesn't always cooperate, but. So I'll switch back to RGB. So once you find the, the kind of color you want, you can just go color fill object, and then you can switch to another color, right? And paint. So that's as simple as it gets, right? You're just simply throwing color on the surface. What I should mention, or if you guys can, can notice this, um, it's actually, let me just turn off the fill option here. So what's happening is the vertices are the ones that are picking up the color information. There's no UVs, meaning there's no pixels. So essentially what's happening is the, the vertices are acting like pixels to display color information. So if I tried to load a texture now, let's say this creepy eyeball texture, and I'll switch so you can switch stroke types, right, from a freehand or dot stroke to a drag, which will drag out a snapshot of this. You see it's so low res and pixelated. So in order to get, um, you know, if you want to do a little bit of actual texture, you do need a high resolution object, um, high polygon count or high vertex count object. So this is only 400 poly. So watch if I control D, which is dividing this a couple times, and I get to 30,000 and I drag this out again, it's still kind of pixelated, but because there's more vertices to act like pixels, right? You're getting a sharper image. And if I, you know, usually my rule of thumb is you need to be about a million polys and up to, sh to really show sharp textures. Now look at that, right? So now it's showing up a lot more kind of crisp. This actually might be limited by the resolution of the texture. It's actually a low res texture at 128 by 128. So let me pick a different one here still pretty low uh, this one's pretty good it's a thousand twenty four so let me let me again show you this at low resolution so this is a wood grain texture you see it just looks like noise and that's due to the limitations of the resolution of the mesh so now when I drag this out right now you're seeing very very crisp resolution the only limit might be the, the source image itself. A thousand pixel by a thousand pixel image, you know, when you really zoom in, might not look so good. So that, that might be more, at this point, the limitation of the, uh, the texture itself or the image itself rather than the mesh. Um, and when I'm texturing, I, I'm often using a, one of the, these two materials, either flat color. So flat color is pretty much what the, the texture would look like just without any lighting added, no shading added. 
what the diffuse map would look like when you're just kind of staring at it in Photoshop. Um, right, and if you want to, you can you can use symmetry. So you can. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh, there we go. So yeah, I can symmetry uh, texture if you want. There's this thing called focal shift. So if you want the full edge of the texture to show up, you see it's. Um, we got the full hard edge of this of that sort of square texture. If you turn focal shift from minus 100 to minus 50, zero, then you're going to get a fade off at the edge of the texture. So that's actually one great way to bleed in um, texture and make it more seamless. And because ZBrush is projection based, meaning that whatever the angle of the of the of the plane of the camera is or your view is to the object, it'll project that onto the surface. So if you're if you're looking at this and then painting across here you may get a streak across that edge that's facing away from the camera so you may have to be careful and mask certain areas and paint them in isolation right and then throw your texture on but again you're seeing a bit of stretching across here so you'd kind of protect um, you know major changes in angle and, and maybe do a little uh, throw in of the texture also you can mix in an alpha as well so you can have uh, you know veins of texture let me switch this to maybe just a flat color I'll switch off texture throw in this green thing and now you can have you know kind of cracks and veins and stuff for you for this assignment um, you can keep it really simple right it's just basic color blocking so you probably only need you know hundreds of thousands or millions of polys um, yeah in this case let me go to skin shade All right so you can just go color fill and if you want to you can just really going with basic uh, uh, a basic brush and you know start to uh, color in some areas right so it can be that simple and this thing it's actually kind of heavy it's around 700,000 polys um, so you know um, it is picking up the color information fairly well but for even you know simpler characters like what's this thing 4,000 color fill to sort of show you right you know that might be a little bit limited for what you want so you might have to you know dynamesh that or um, if you're in dynamesh I usually just go the higher resolution if you need a bit more detail to paint in some texture so let's dynamesh this thing so this thing is now 60,000 and I can actually get a lot more refined um, lines in the paint job so again if I'm not putting you know, pixel-based, a lot of heavy pixel-based texturing information, you can get away with a, a fair bit less um, stuff. And remember, you can mask areas, right? So if you mask, brush an area, right? So you can put an armband there or whatever. Very, very simple to kind of get, get some texture in, into spots, right? Um that kind of covers the basics I guess for texturing if uh, you so talking a bit earlier about the character sheet um, oh sorry I'll, I'll jump back actually one sec there's one really interesting thing that we can do with this so if you've got something that's got a lot of detail like this uh, which for most of you may not be the case but you may want to add a little bit of sort of stylization you can go to um, masking and you can play around there's a bunch of different types there's mask by cavity mask by ambient occlusion uh, this might take a few minutes, so bear with me. But yeah, mask by ambient occlusion, it'll find all the little crevices and cracks and uh, calculate shading for those creased areas. Cavity is somewhat similar. You can do mask by peaks and valleys. Um, and so it'll it'll look at the shape and then in, in those, again, those creased areas, those sort of crevice areas, it'll create a shading. So what's cool about that is that you can then uh, paint in or fill remember I did color fill color you can flood an area with like cool shadows so you can add some you know maybe a deeper red in those crevices or, or blues and purples so if you take a look at this look at the you see that um, that shading now if I control tap oh I <laughs> crashed this is my my day to crash ZBrush I guess um, yeah, normally you can flip the masking, so you you actually only see the masking, uh, or you can only paint with within the crevices and the cracks. Hopefully, I can get back to uh, maybe I'll try a different type of masking as well. 
By the way, if you do experience, this is a little extra tip. If you do experience like weird uh, crashes and corruptions and stuff, sometimes you can go to geometry, go to mesh integrity, and check the mesh for problems. And right now, it actually says there's ten polygons with um, multiple references to the same vertex. So there's probably a little weird bug in there. If I go to fix mesh, ZBrush just auto fixes it. Check mesh, and it should say, "Hey, successful mesh." And then oftentimes, too, to speed up ZBrush a bit, um, you can go to Modified Topology and go to Optimize Points. Um, so basically, it just it scans the surface, renumbers, and relabels each individual vertex so that the data is more efficient. Uh, and that usually leads to less crashes and, and bugs and stuff. So I'll show you that one more time. So if we go to uh, Masking, I, I might try just Peaks and Valleys here just to quickly maybe get a, another mask. So this is kind of interesting. This is giving a weird sort of texture, which might be kind of fun. And you can play with these, these range sliders. So you can try to remask it a different way. Maybe shift the coverage a bit. Maybe I'll shift it down. Right. There. So I get something similar in a way. Let me tweak this a bit more. So what's great about this, right, it's uh, something I can use uh, to fill the color in. So let me just clear the mask first. I'll do maybe a, a pale green kind of uh, fill on this thing. Color, fill object, mask peaks and valleys. So depending on the results you get and what you like, I may just control tap on it once to, to blur the mask on this. And then I could go in with like a cooler, darker sort of blue. Go to color, fill object. And now we get this really crazy uh, base, you know, for color. And sometimes you can just use it instead of filling with a, a really insane color, you can just get a, a deeper version of the color that you were kind of working on to add a little uh, accent to that surface, right? So it's a really amazing quick way to get some color, some stylization into the surface. And if you really want it stylized, you know, you can blur the crap out of it uh, and do color fill object. Right, so you get this really nice sort of soft shading effect on, on the mesh. That's how a lot of stylized character work is actually kind of done. Either there's a, a big ambient occlusion map, which gives you those soft shadows from the crevices and the cracks. And uh, then that's just basically colorized and laid on top of a flat color. Or it's done, which is very similar, doing the method I just showed you guys.